Hey, possibly the most polarizing of musical instruments of all time has to be the banjo. Yeah, you either love it or you hate it, right? Isn't that what they say? Huh. What? Yeah, I suppose some people go, what do you mean? Does anybody like the banjo? I thought people only hated the banjo. Let me tell you, if you're a banjo player, it is very common for people to come sidling up to you, looking around to make sure nobody's overhearing, and then they say, I just love the banjo, man. Oh yeah, I love it. It just sounds so good. You could get rid of all those other instruments and I could listen to the banjo all day. It is awesome, right? So that's how people feel about the banjo. Yeah, you love it or you hate it. It's the marmite of musical instruments, yeah? Why would anyone say that? Well, let me tell you. When I went to Canada over 20 years ago, Marmite was just a savoury food spread that myself and I don't think anybody else had really strong feelings about. But when I've come back to this country, I discover that it's just become part of, a, of the British normal way of speaking. Because whenever you talk about something that you either love or you hate, you always say, just like Marmite. Yep, that's the Marmite effect. You love it or you hate it. And I'm thinking to myself, when did this begin? Where did you always have to add this bit about Marmite being stuff that you love or hate? Well, I've looked it up and it turns out that Marmite invented it. Yes, it was a Marmite advertising campaign in the mid 1990s where they put out this idea that you love it or you hate it. But the main thing is that you talk about it. Yes, it was one of the most brilliant advertising campaigns ever because it, it, it got everyone talking about Marmite and just casually mentioning it in conversation. And if you don't know what it is, it's a, it's a leftover product of the brewing industry. It's made from, um, it, well, it's yeast extract. So it's concentrated leftover brewer's yeast, I, I guess. And then they add a bit of vegetable flavoring. And then they also add some vitamins, niacin, thiamine, riboflavin, there's B12 and folic acid in there. So it's treated as a food supplement for people that are short of those things. Uh, but you should be careful of eating too much because it is salty. It's about 6% salt. But then again, you don't really need a lot of it. You know, it's, it's a very strong, savory flavor, lots of umami in there. And the way I like to have it is to spread it on buttered toast quite thinly, cut it into fingers, and then dip that into my boiled egg. Mmm, quite delicious. And guess what? Marmite is in the news again. <laughs> if you don't believe me, take a look at the June 11th edition of the Daily Telegraph, because right there on the front page it says, Marmite shortage. This has been caused by COVID, believe it or not, because the pubs are closed, so they're not making as much beer, so there's not so much brewer's yeast left over, and so the byproduct is no longer available, and Mar might have announced that their large jars will no longer be made. <laughs> so there's going to be a shortage now. Do you know what I think? I think this is the highly paid executives there at, at Marmite, the, the brilliant advertising minds thinking, what can we do with this COVID thing to, uh, to, to, to get some sales? This is, what, this is what they're doing. And they put out a press release saying that they're not making the large jars anymore. And so uh, the newspapers need something snappy to say. So they say uh, there's a Marmite shortage. And I don't believe it for a moment. Like seriously, with all the beer that gets drunk in this country, do you really think that there isn't enough uh, brewer's yeast left over to, to be able to make Marmite from now until the end of time? Come on, let's get serious. I tell you folks, this is how economics works. You can take it from me. And uh, I know I don't have any proof of this, but I don't know. You know, we, they've already got a proven track record that they're, that they're brilliant at putting these things out. So, so now there's a shortage. So people are going to be rushing off to the supermarket and coming back, you know, carrying trays of Marmite that they're going to stuff into the cupboards in the space where the loo roll used to be. And people that have never tried Marmite before are now going to be tasting it and deciding whether they like it or not. So hey, this, is, this is how the world works. And... Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm really here not, not to talk about Marmite, though, but to talk about uh, another kind of musical Marmite, which is disco, right? 
When disco came out in the 70s, it was a fun thing, right? It was very inclusive, it was, it was, it was fun. You, you know, you, you went into the dark place, was the beat going, it was a happy sound. Uh, you, you could wear your long hair, bell-bottom jeans and your shirts with the big lapels and, and everybody had those smiley face badges on them somewhere on the, on the denim and uh, that, that was it, that was disco. And it was fine until somebody in the 1980s said disco sucks and all of a sudden we're supposed to not like disco anymore. Hmm, how did that happen? Right, there's nothing wrong with disco, it was fine. But it, it, again, it became one of those things, you either love it or you hate it. Yep, just like Marmite. So all this has got me thinking, what if, what if we take these two musical Marmites, the banjo and disco, and put them together? Right, now, if the Marmite theory holds, this should produce a sound that is gonna be so amazingly tasty. It's gonna be lovely. Your, your ears will not be able to get enough of it. They're, gonna, they're just gonna drip and drool with auditory saliva that's gonna run down your chin and, and drip off your nipples. It's gonna be so good. Or it's gonna be like the most vile thing you have ever heard in your life. It's gonna be absolutely horrible. So, there we go, let's just let, bear with me and let's try this experiment out. This is a, a musical Marmite experiment. And uh, let's, see, uh, let's see what you think of this. This is uh, something, uh, this is what you get when you put disco and banjo together, you get disco banjo. Aha, there we go. You like that? Like it so far? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Ooh, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. Ooh, heaven knows, heaven knows, heaven knows, heaven knows, heaven knows. Yeah! 